there needs to be enough voting control to give a strong influence, but not not so much that I can't be fired if I go insane. Um, but uh, you know, and I, I think that sort of number is in the mid twenties, approximately. All right, that was Elon Musk on last night's earnings call. Joining us right now to talk about everything from his pay package to robots. Oh, yeah, and a lot of the news beyond Elon Musk is CNBC contributor Walter Isaacson. He is the author of Elon Musk. He's also a Perella Weinberg advisory partner. And, Walter, there's so many things we want to talk about with you, but let's start with Elon Musk since uh, you're the expert. Sure. You wrote the book. Um, You've been watching what he's doing and saying about this new pay package. He currently owns, I think, about 15 percent of Tesla shares. Um, this pay package would boost it to maybe another 12 percent. So put it above 25 percent and do what he has been asking, which is uh, saying that he doesn't feel comfortable not only with robots, but with AI, with developing all of these things and not having some say in how that gets done. And he's basically threatened to leave without it. Um, what do you make of it all? Well, he's been talking about this for two or three years, and the big news from the last night's call was that he really sees Tesla as moving beyond being a car company into being, as you said, an AI company in two different ways, building Optimus the robot. That pay package he's talking about says you have to build a million of them before, uh, for the uh, pay package to click in. And secondly, uh, totally autonomous driving, robo-taxis with no steering wheels. And ever since he was a kid, he really, he used to read the Isaac Asimov novels, the robot novels, when he was a young kid in South Africa with no friends sitting in the corner of the bookstore. And the whole point of those novels is you build the robots, they can turn on us. Now, it may not seem uh, logical, but that's been ingrained in him. And he wants control of Tesla because he sees it now as a robot and AI company. And do you expect that he will get it from the shareholders? Well, the shareholders are voting in a few weeks. And uh, as you've watched, some of the institutional investors and the, uh, things like Glass Lewis have said, hey, don't do this. The shareholders voted last time around, as you remember, for that 50 or so billion dollar pay package that's still being held up in fights in the Delaware courts. He's making a big campaign, both on X and then last night, when he said, hey, I'm going to walk. I'm not going to put all this AI power into this company and then have it be when I can get ousted. So there's a lot of institutional investors, and they may be pushing back on this, but a lot of people invest in uh, Tesla stock emotionally. So we'll see how the shareholders vote. Yeah, Elon himself has made the point that, hey, look at the market cap of Tesla. It's worth more than all of the other car companies combined. Good luck if this doesn't pass. Which one of those CEOs would you like to have run this company? Because it's not going to be me. And that's a pretty potent threat for shareholders who have done very well with him over the years. Yeah, and it's a very difficult situation when you create a company that has one person who sees himself as the key man and in some ways is the key person uh, there, especially because, as he noted himself, you know, if he gets 25 percent, he can't really be pushed out unless he goes totally insane. Of course, with Elon Musk, he's always skirting that line. So I think if you're an investor, say, OK, how do we define totally insane? Yeah, and I guess how would that work? Everybody else would have to vote against him at that point if he had 25%. Yeah, I think if he controls 75% of the stock and you know some of his allies have more, it'd be very difficult. But when I talk about, joke about him saying, OK, if I become insane, there are many things that seem totally insane. Like, let's shoot up the largest rocket ship ever and have it land upright and catch it on the launch pad. Or, for that matter, having autonomous uh, robo-taxis, full self-driving. Even four or five years ago, we thought that was crazy. I think a lot of us now have gotten in either to self-driving Teslas or Waymos and say, well, that's going to transform everything. And when I saw him introduce Optimus the robot, uh, I disagree with him. I don't <laughs> think that will destroy jobs. I think it will create enough productivity. There'll, there'll be a whole new types of jobs we've never thought of. But if you put a million robots out there that can do things, these sound insane. But in the past 20 years, he sometimes has moved the insane to the merely late. 
He is going after Sean Duffy at this point, oh, the yeah. Transportation Secretary calling him Sean Dummy because uh, Duffy is uh, talking about opening up uh, the bidding for the SpaceX contract to ferry uh, astronauts back and forth to the surface of the moon. It's a tough position when you're still going back and forth with the Trump administration like this. Absolutely. He's not somebody who carefully calculates his own interests like some of the other tech CEOs around and figures out how do I play up to the Trump administration or push back on him some. And it's uh, not a pretty sight. It wasn't a pretty sight when he went into the Trump administration. He's not wired to be uh, somebody who gets along and goes along in government. The day that he was pretty much ousted from the Trump administration was a Friday. A lot of things happened, and Trump brought him into the Oval Office and said, you know, thanks for all your help, but goodbye. But the main thing that happened that day was Jared Isaacman, who had flown on some SpaceX missions, and uh, Musk knew him, had been nominated to be NASA director. And Trump told Musk, before it became public, I'm yanking Jared Isaacman's uh, appointment. That caused Elon Musk to really uh, go ballistic, so to speak. And it's not because Jared Isaacman is some close personal friend. I've seen them together. They're, they're not pals. But Jared Isaacman is a true test pilot, somebody who's flown in SpaceX vehicles. And uh, Elon strongly believes he's needed at NASA. And Elon is not using the most diplomatic means to try to push that on the administration.